Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for June, where we cover big and small releases from Firebase. We have six topics today, so let's dig in right away. Let's begin with a new way to test your apps. Android device streaming, powered by Firebase, is now generally available. Android device streaming allows you to test your applications on remote, physical Android devices hosted in Google's data centers. You can connect to and interact with the latest devices directly from Android Studio, including the new Google Pixel 9 series and select models from Samsung, Xiaomi, and others. After connecting, you can deploy your app, interact with the device, and perform any actions you could with a direct ADB connection. When your session ends, the device is wiped and factory reset for privacy. This feature is available at no cost for projects on the Spark plan with usage limits of 30 minutes per project per month. To get started, open the Device Manager in the latest version of Android Studio and select a Firebase project. For detailed instructions, refer to the documentation linked in the description. The Crashlytics dashboard also received a couple of quality of life updates to speed up the debugging process. You can now preview your team's issue notes directly from the main issue list, providing immediate context. Additionally, for native Android crashes, you can now view tombstones within the issue details page to get more insight into memory-related failures. Next up, Firebase CLI versions 14.5.1 is out with a few updates. New MCP tools have been added for app hosting. MCP stands for Model Context Protocol, an open standard with the goal to standardize how AI applications connect with external tools, data sources, and systems. These new tools combine the backend and its traffic resource to help LLMs make better inferences about your app's traffic and provide new capabilities to fetch, build, or service logs. We have also released several updates across the SDKs for various platforms. An open beta is now available for on-device conversion measurement with versions 11.14.0 of our Apple SDK. This will help you measure campaign impact more effectively while keeping user privacy. For Android developers, look out for a breaking change with the speech config class, which now accepts a voice class instance instead of a deprecated voices class. So please update your speech config initializations accordingly. Speaking of breaking changes, C++ versions 12.8.0 moves the user messaging platform SDK to its own top level library. The previous version in the GMA library is now deprecated. JavaScript SDK version 11.9.0 now supports title, maximum, minimum, max items, min items, and property ordering for schema in AI logic. In Flutter version 3.12.0, the Firebase AI plugin now includes an example using Flutter so loud for audio outputs in live API streams. Pigeon support is also available in Analytics for improved cross-platform communication. As for our admin SDKs, we've added support in the proxy field in Android notification for Firebase cloud messaging in Go SDK version 4.16.1, Python SDK version 6.9.0 and Java SDK version 9.5.0, respectively. Finally, we recently announced a new experimental feature in the Firebase AI Logic Client SDK for Web, Hybrid On Device Inference. Now you can try it for yourself on this interactive demo that we've built. This hybrid approach allows you to enhance privacy, have offline availability for your AI features, and potential cost savings. To try it out on your apps, Enable the experimental on-device multimodal model flags in Chrome and set mode prefer on-device when initializing your generative model. To understand this update in more detail and see it in action, take a look at this blog post, as well as the documentation's link below. Those are all the updates we have for today. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. My name is Cynthia, and I'll see you in a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.